to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by the virtualinstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. Getting Sketchy Live is where either myself or my good friend and fellow artist and art teacher, Ashley, Hearst tries to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. That's what we're normally doing here uh, for Getting Sketchy. And we're, tonight we're going to do time drawings, but we're actually going to do three of them. And we'll get into that in just a minute. But first, I want to say hello to Ashley over there. How are you doing tonight, Ashley? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for asking. Sorry I couldn't be with you guys last week. It was my fault. I was sick. I sounded horrible. So you wouldn't want to have listened to me for 45 minutes drawing anyway. But I'm feeling great today, 100% and ready to draw. Yes, and Ash was feeling bad last week, and I had knee surgery the day before last last scheduled broadcast. So um, I probably could have done the broadcast actually because you're sitting down. I'm sitting down, but my knee surgery went went really well, and I'm actually doing normal activities again when I really shouldn't be. I've got the green light to go and move around like I've always done on April fourth. So that's just a few days away, and I'm getting the stitches out on Friday so that I can go surfing next week. Uh, so anyway, I am, I'm pumped. I'm excited that my surgery went well, and I'm pumped and excited that Ashley's back with us this week and feeling a lot better. We are going to do the broadcast tonight, as you can see here, and this is going to be followed up by our live lesson for members over at thevirtualinstructor.com. But next week is actually spring break for my kids and Ashley's kids, and uh, we're going we're gonna to be away from the studio that week. So uh, next week, we will not have Getting Sketchy or the live lesson, but the week after that, we'll be back to it. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of schools that are on spring break next week. So um, if you have school-age children or if you are a school-age ch child yourself, I'm sure you'll probably be away as well. Um, so just a quick programming note, next week uh, we are going to take a break and then we'll be back uh, the week after that for episode seven of Getting Sketchy. This is actually episode six, if I believe, if I'm, if I believe I'm correct. Uh, anyway, this season, what we are doing right. is we, it's all about being creative. So um, I am offering up some creative prompts to you guys for you to vote on. And actually they're not even fully prompts, they're just phrases and you're voting on them. Then we're revealing the prompt. And last time you guys voted, uh, you voted for Ashley to uh, do three ways. And what three ways means is that he's gonna create a drawing the same this, of the same subject three times, one for one minute, one drawing for five minutes, and one drawing for 30 minutes. So what are the challenges in doing that, Ashley? Well, I think what it's going to be for me is uh, value range. I'm probably going to work with try to work with maybe just two values, maybe no values in the one minute sketch. Just try to get some lines in there and then two values in the five minute sketch. Each each of those drawings is actually give, going to give me a chance to digest and process this uh, this subject. So hopefully I'll be able to attack the drawing in 30 minutes and maybe get as far as I normally would in 45 minutes having already practiced, so to speak, practice being part of the artistic process. Awesome. So. You're going to have to also choose what to leave in and what to take out too. Or, yeah, what quick what uh, what I don't even get to is what's going to be left out. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but it should be a fun exercise. This is actually something that we used to do in figure drawing class sure. uh, in college. Uh, we would have one minute gesture drawings and then we would move on to five or 10 minute drawings and then we would do longer ones, of course. So, it's, it's truly sketchy, you know, right, I mean, right. we're going to be sketchy. flipping pages in the sketchbook just like we would if we were, uh, you know, if we were in the classroom. So uh, get your sketchbook. You're going to need three pages. And I think we're just about ready to go. We're just about ready to go. Um, but I'd like to remind you, if you're watching this live on uh, YouTube, yes. of course, there is a chat box. You can post questions or comments. I'm going to be manning the chat box tonight. I see you guys from all over the world. I'll do my best to shout out where you guys are coming from uh, in just a few minutes. But you're welcome to ask comment, ask questions or make comments. If you put it in capital letters, that will help me see it a little bit easier amongst all the other ones because the chat box does get rolling really quickly here on YouTube. Um, but we'd love to answer your questions for you. Of course, if they're art related, um, it can be anything that's art related. It doesn't have to be about what we're doing tonight. Um, and I'd also like to remind you all that if uh, you want to go a little deeper with your drawing and painting, uh, we have a membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. There's also weekly live lessons after tonight's broadcast here on YouTube. 
Uh, Ashley's going to be leading us through or continuing the process of creating a oil painting on a black surface using a scumbling technique. Really interesting process. Um, the live lessons are all recorded. They go date back all the way to 2012 and they're all stored in our vault. We also have weekly critiques as part of the members minute and also a year long curriculum for visual arts teachers. All of that is included in the membership program. So if you want to go a little bit deeper with your drawing and painting skills, I encourage you to check out the membership program. Everyone starts out with a uh, free trial for seven days so you can see if the program is right for you. There's a link in the description below this video if you want to check out the membership program. Also, if you want to get on our mailing list and also receive three of our course videos and eBooks for free, you can do that as well. There's a link in the description below for that as well. And uh, the materials that Ashley's going to be using tonight are also linked up in the description below this video graphite pencils and sketch paper, pretty basic stuff. You mm -hmm. probably already have it, but uh, if you want to uh, to purchase those items through the links below, that is an affiliate link. That means that we make a small commission if you purchase through that and no additional cost to you. And uh, with that being said, I want you all to stick around to the end because voting has, well, it's, it's pretty much a, a, a foregone conclusion, but voting is still open at the end of this broadcast, until the end of this broadcast, for what I'm going to have to be drawing, what I'm gonna do for my drawing uh, for the next episode of Getting Sketchy two weeks from now. And I'm really excited because, I, like I said, I think it's a foregone conclusion. Uh, the one that's leading right now is leading by a wide margin. Um, and I'm excited about doing this one for you guys. But if you want to vote, there's still time. You can click on the community tab from the, uh, the virtual instructor channel, the YouTube channel. Uh, and to access that, just click on my face in the lower left-hand corner. That will take you to the YouTube channel. You can look for the community tab and you can vote. And you'll also find the photo reference that Ashley is going to be working from tonight there as well. Now, I think I've said everything. <laughs> That's a mouthful. I think uh, so. So you're ready to go, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about materials. I saw there was a question about the paper size, so we'll talk about that a little bit too before we get started. Okay, and great. I already see those questions rolling in. So yeah. we'll go ahead and switch over and get into this. All right, so I actually just have my sketchbook, which is 9 by 12, um, but the area that you can see on the screen is about, I guess, or, or about, uh, it's about 9 by, about 9 by 9. That's what we're looking at. So I'm just going to kind of be working in the center of a sketchbook page. I want to give a special shout out to Brooke, who's watching, one of my students who I tortured with a Getting Sketchy episode during <laughs> class today. So Brooke, oh, this is Brooke, going to be I'm, your second Getting Sketchy today. Glad I'm you're so here. I'm so sorry you got tortured by Ashley today at school. <laughs> Glad or Mr. Hurst. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm Mr. Hurst at school. <laughs> but we can, I can be Ashley tonight. So, all right. So I've got an ebony pencil and then I found this ancient pencil. It's, uh, a ba bonded banker's a pencil, banker's pencil, and it's an F. So wow. I just thought I would bring it along because I think it's older than I am. The uh, <laughs> the eraser is totally dry rotted. That's so a sixty six hundred. Yeah, I am pencil not right going to be. That uh, I have mean? no idea. I got to look this up. It says made by <laughs> Eagle Pencil Company. So I've got my electric eraser, eraser, which will probably break out in a thirty minute drawing. I don't know if I'll even have a need for it in the one in five minute drawing. And then just a standard pink pearl. And a needed eraser because we always needed an eraser. Now I think I'm I I may be wrong, but I think that Prismacolor colored pencils used to be manufactured by the Eagle. I think you're right. I, I, yeah. I, when I saw Eagle on there, yeah. I, it rang a bell, but I wasn't sure from where. Well, that was your Eagle Eye, of course, <laughs> uh, finding that out. Um, and Jan, no, the vote is not fixed. Um, <laughs> but I will tell you that if you whatever you place first in any type of listing usually wins. Oh, really? It really does. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to so. have to use that to my advantage now that I know that. And then, of course, well, I'm I have the one a... listing the one. So you need to tell me which one. Oh, OK. OK. For, that's what I'll do for next time. Has, so has the very first listed one each time? No. OK. A third a one that was number three and then one that was number five one. OK. Well, that's a OK mix. But we're already on the sixth episode. So I guess right. it's leaning towards number one. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, well, so the pencils are pretty simple. I noticed a comment earlier when you were mentioning gesture drawing, and Anne said uh, that wrenches don't have a gesture. It does have a gesture. It's pretty much just a straight line that does like this right across my pencil. But just the direction it's laying would be its gesture in this case. Pretty simple. Yeah, gesture is... is uh, the word gesture is used a lot with figure drawing. Right, typically. Uh, right, and then we make the assumption that, you know, it's easy to remember that because we make a gesture towards someone and that's a position sure. that we put our body sure. in. But all items 
anything that you draw has a specific gesture that you can capture. If it's like a bottle or a glass, it's pretty much just a, a straight up and down mark would be your gesture. But it's always nice to start with that so that you can build around it. And it's that's what I'm going to do gesture. now. It's always mm -hmm. a good gesture to do that. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, hello, Oof. buddy from Germany, New York City. Um, let's see. Southern UK, Texas Panhandle, South Africa. Thank you guys for joining us from all over the world. Atlanta on the south side of Atlanta. They're very specific. All Wisconsin. Right. All right. So the first drawing is going to be one minute. So yeah. I'm not going to start the timer yet. I just want to ask you, Ashley, how are you going to draw this wrench in one minute? Um, I'm probably, I'm going to start very light and then, uh, try to, you know, just try to grab a couple of shapes, pretty much like a rectangle and then maybe an oval for where the wrench is going to, you know, the, the head of the wrench is going to go. And then I'm going to switch to my ebony pencil and just try to get some dark lines in there that capture some of the qualities of the wrench. Okay. It's pretty much angles. Well, as soon as you tell me to go, I will Yeah, normally I like timer. to start a little early while you're talking, but right. I can't do that now because this is a one minute drawing. Now, did so. you say what size the paper was? Oh, uh, I, I said I'm working in about an eight or nine inch by nine inch area on a 12 by nine sketchbook okay. so pretty much just in the middle of a sketchbook page all right all right all we right. ready you tell me go and i'll and i'll start it oh gosh i can feel my heart starting to i know my one, heart's beating. one minute is ridiculous i'm sweating a little yeah. bit I'm, yeah my, my pencil might fly out of my hand <laughs> all right let's do it go all right one minute's on the clock there i'll move this up so it's Maybe a little bit easier to see there. There we go. All right, something maybe like there. Okay, here goes. So, what a great starting gesture, and that's a, really a good um, example of how we can still find a gesture in, in, in an object like a wrench. So you've got a hard bend here. I'm gonna switch to the other side so I can think about the relationship of the two sides of the head. We're gonna go uphill just a little bit. You know, this is a nice opportunity for some analysis before I actually get into the longer drawings. Oh my gosh, 19 seconds. Funky Groove 50 says, you guys really use the sharpest pencils I have ever seen. And yeah, that, that banker's pencil sure was sharp. <laughs> That oh, pencil's oh. for crunching numbers, I guess. And all doing right, gesture that's drawings. it. All one right. minute. That's that is First it. That's, oh in. gosh, I just want to add one more line right here, so it's three dimensional. Yep, up there, one but. minute. But you know what? We can probably all still read that as a wrench. You can tell so, what it's supposed to be, I guess. So now, I just want to point out because mm -hmm. I, I think I have a feeling you're going to go through the same phases for each drawing just each one is going to be a little bit more detailed and have a little bit more visual information so you started with that diagonal gesture right just tried to find that and i almost got it maybe it's a little vertical so you know i'm maybe in the second second try i'll lay it down just a little bit more all right um and let's let's take a quick look to see if we have any questions I'm not here? Disappointed Somebody disappointed with how this area went. I think that's um, all right. The bicycle lady asked, "What's the difference between oil bars and oil pastel?" From what I understand, uh, the bicycle lady, oil bars are actually more akin to oil paint, and when they go on, they're they're thicker, like mm. oil paint. Where oil pastels never really fully dry. I think oil bars do dry. Oh, I did not realize um, that. Oil pastels never really fully dry and um, are really not intended. To be used, and I'm, I'm tiptoeing around this, not necessarily for painting, even though a finished oil pastel drawing might be considered a painting, and we might even call it an oil pastel painting, but oil bars are lean a little bit more towards painting. They're used obviously for larger areas, they're a lot bigger. And if I'm correct, I think I am, that the oil bars do dry like oil paint where oil pastels don't. So, uh, pretty big, pretty big differences between the two, actually. All right. Um, All right our, very good. I'm going to turn see. the page. Okay. Uh, let me get your timer set up here real sure. quick. And this time we're going to have five minutes. I did have two little marks just to try to make sure I don't draw past my margin. So that's about it. It's almost exactly a pencil's width. Yeah. Pencil's length. All right, five minutes is going to seem like a long time now. After yeah, a yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can relax now. So whenever you're ready, I will start the timer. I felt like I had started drawing and glanced up at the screen. It was on 19 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened? All I right. was pretty impressed with your your first wrench. Thank you, thank you. All right, uh, let's do it. Go. All right, five All right, minutes. So this on time the clock. I'm going to think about my gesture line again. I feel like that's maybe 
maybe but a little bit. That's little, definitely a slower, a little gesture. flatter. <laughs> a little flat. Okay, there we go. And yeah, all the time in the world. Just being a little more careful with my lines here. All right. I wonder if bankers even use pencils anymore. I doubt it. They probably just use the erasers <laughs> to fudge the numbers. Now, Matt, <laughs> for all for all you bankers out there following along, <laughs> this is a much slower gesture, much slower, but still loose, still loose. All right, we got a question. Question. There we are. Any suggestions for sharpening pencils without a knife? I have arthritic shaky hands and it's not safe for me to use the knife it's not safe for any of us to use the knife, especially me uh sharpeners i've tried don't give long enough lead for for how i draw they do make um pencil sharpeners for longer leads so that more of the lead the more of the graphite is visible off the end of the pencil if you just search uh on the internet or any place that you might want to buy stuff from like Amazon or whatever, you probably can find long tipped pencil sharpeners there. I, I actually mm. bought uh, a, a contraption from Amazon for that and it works okay. Um, I still think that sharpening with a sharp, uh, knife is faster and you have a little bit more control. It's cooler. But, but the, it, it is cooler until you cut yourself. Um, yeah. But they do make uh, sharpeners handheld sharpeners for longer tipped if you want your pencil to have a longer tip like the ashley's banker pencil is right i sharpened it with this dangerous rusty looking exacto knife so and still there, sharp and i have a video on youtube on how to sharpen your pencil like a pro um and i do cover those longer pencil sharpeners in that video and Jan points out there's also mechanical pencils. Yeah, there's also pencils that, that I like to refer to them as mechanical pencils, but they're really just lead holders, and they hold uh, different grades of, of graphite. They're and, not really mechanical because there's no moving part, right? Right. It right. just they're has not a really it just kind of has a gripper in there. Right. So they're kind of they're really technically lead holders, but uh, you could confuse them with a mechanical pencil. All right, we got two minutes here, so. Do a little bit of, just kind of try to grab some of the darker areas. Not going to make many changes, just given the nature of the sketch. Okay, Teresa has made a suggestion. Just got my F mat A F M A T long tip sharpener Sunday works great. So uh, that might be something that you can look up there to find that longer pencil sharpener. Mark points out all pencils are lead holders if you think about it. That's true. That's our, very our hand, true. As are our hands, I guess, or pencil holders. Yes. I'm holding my, my lead holder is in my pencil holder. The artist is the holder of the land lead yes. holder. But who is the holder of the artist? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's think deeply about that. Okay. Um, I like the three dimension the three dimensional qualities of the end of the wrench there. Yeah, that part's more, that's the part that I'm most interested in. I can already tell. And the wrench is, you know, it's it seems simple, but it's tricky because oh, it is it is it's funky in here. Well, because it's flatter on the handle, and then the the end of it gets thicker, so it creates kind of a, a triangular shadow underneath it. You know? Yeah, that's right. All right, let's see. Oh, I still have forty two seconds. There's plenty, plenty of plenty of time. Plenty of time. All right. Well, it's a little wide up here, so we'll bring that down some. Okay, Buddy points out, Matt, the video you mentioned is great. I use different sharpening techniques depending on the pencil. And Edie says, who would you rather have over for a studio visit, Harry and Meghan or the Kardashians? And Edie, that's not an art question. <laughs> but um, I would rather have neither. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Matt. Um, Okay. I love the line, the use of line there to create the indication of a shadow and the variety of different lines there. 
All right, that it time is up. But that is a pretty good wrench for five minutes. Got a little something happening here, a little bit of that uh, depression in there, and uh, was able to do maybe some two value, pretty much two value shading, just to kind of find some light and dark in the end. So pretty happy with that, and uh, I feel like I had more of a chance to absorb what in the world is happening here because it's a it's a funky bunch of angles. So I think uh, I think that <laughs> it's a Marky me. Mark and a funky bunch yeah, of that's angles. Right. Marks and marks and funky bunch of angles. <laughs> <laughs> so marks and marks and funky that's bunch great. of angles. Um, only a select few people will get that joke. But the fact that me and Ashley get it is all that matters. Yeah, that's right. Um, all right. So uh, l- all right. So we've got the, the last drawing is 30 minutes. So mm-hmm. now this is going to really seem like an eternity. Yeah, it will. This uh, is going to be different because usually the 45 minutes seems fast. But having done these two, I f- I'm going to feel like I've got all the time in the world. Well, I was just looking at the time and we have really a lot of time allotted for the yeah. rest of the show. <laughs> well, and um, you have a 30 minute drawing left. Um, of course, we can go over a little bit, you know, for the final drawing. It's always a suggestion. Yeah, let's see here. Um, Are there any questions to catch up that's on what before I'm we checking start? Out, uh, let's see. Again, just a reminder, if you have a question that's directed at us specifically, if you put that in all capital letters, that'll help me see it a little bit easier. Um, a comment or a question that's directed at us. Uh, I don't see anything really here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. I now, see a lot of comments, of course. Well, you need to reset the timer y- to yes, 30. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm giving you more time to prepare there. And, time to uh, take some so deep breaths. Take some deep breaths. Try to slow my heart rate a little bit. Diaphragmic breathing. Mm-hmm. But this is a great, I mean, uh, this is the way we warmed up in drawing class in college with uh, very brief drawings. And uh, it's a good way to good way to kind of connect your hand and your mind and loosen, <laughs> loosen up a little bit before before it really counts. And now, For sure. Now it counts. Um, all right, so uh, let's. All I'm right. ready here with the timer. So moving on Turn to, to the third next page. sheet of paper here, and uh, got some got a few good comments on your five minute drawing. Great. Uh, and now of course, for this one, um, I might correct some proportions. You know, on the last first drawing, I did no erasing. The last drawing, I erased one line and moved it about, about maybe three millimeters. Mm-hmm. Um, but for this one, uh, I'll be able to hopefully slow down a little bit and make some corrections to the parts that I noticed were out of proportion in the last drawing. All right, here's a question. Uh, let's. I think this is a question. Let's see. I'll, we'll come back to that. Oh, Jazz W says, "Where's the lettering on the wrench?" Mm. Well. That's what there this might be is lettering for. on the wrench this time. Yeah, that's what this is for. Okay, I am ready with the timer when, whenever you are ready. All right, whenever let's you tell me. Let's go. Uh, let's begin. All right, and thirty minutes are okay. on the clock. So again, I'm going to look for um, a line that travels across my page at about the angle, almost like a spine running through the wrench's handle. And uh, now I've got some time to think about it, so I'll, I'll check that against my. Reference. My reference is in front of me. It's not quite as close as the reference that you can see on the screen is to the drawing, so I do have to look up to measure that. So all three of these drawings, you'll notice that Ashley is starting them the exact same way, just with maybe less speed when Excuse he has me. more time. But it's still it's still starting with a gesture drawing. It's still starting with a loose idea of where the wrench is located on the paper that's right now the back end of the wrench is round but it's really squished down because of the angle it's a little bit foreshortened brenda gives another suggestion for the long tip sharpener she says i have a black wing long tip sharpener works great and i also have that one and yes it does work great but it is like all black wing stuff it is expensive Mm -hmm. Um, so just be wary of that It's expensive for a pencil sharpener, <laughs> but then the black yeah, wing pencils you mean, are expensive you know, for pencils. They are, yeah, they are. But it, they're a pleasure to draw with. But so are, so is bankers pencils, from what I understand. <laughs> Especially the the sixty six hundred model. I'm just wondering, do they have six hundred six thousand? 599 this other is, models yeah, no, before this. This is the model number. This is right. the model number. There's Thank only goodness one, it's not there's only model one like number it. 666. Yeah. You know, it's almost, oh gosh. It almost is. 
Well, you don't, you don't need any of that. With Satan's pencil. <laughs> All right, let's see now. This feels like a pretty good angle for part of the head, which would place, uh, I think the oval is in about the right place. Start to feed it into the handle now. It's an unusual shape. This is, now this was, I believe this is my wrench. I think I took a picture of one of my own tools Went down in the basement. I do, you know, as you guys know, maybe I like to draw tools done that before or art supplies I consider those tools as well all right it feels okay so far now let's see in that curve I believe approximately here maybe where we need to make our first bend, our first angle. And that's going to change things back here. So we are going to, I am trying to think about sort of the spacing between contours right now to try to uh, refine my proportions some. Pat says that the the Coombe long point pen, or long point sharpener works well and is virtually identical to the Blackwing. That is K-U-M. I'm not familiar with that, but... Um, I'm sure it's great if Pat says it is. And Edie says Satan's pencil, that would be popular among goth artists. Maybe so. Hmm. Um, I think they like to draw in blood. Yeah. That's what comes out of Satan's pencil, right? That's well, probably. Well, you know, what's really, you know, what's really interesting is, you know, we, you sign your name on the crossroads. And, and, and wear the black eyeliner and stuff. A lot of times they're, they're labeled as gothic or uh emo or whatever but i think people have lost the real definition of gothic oh i know gothic it's, a, it's is, a beautiful is architectural style yeah. yeah um and it is it is super like rock star cool gothic architecture yeah is. it really is and i think that's where maybe the original idea for goth stuff came from because of its it coolness. was super cool mm -hmm. um and the the emo people call people emo now Emo is short, is that short for, for emotional. emotional, right? And I think there's just a real misunderstanding among young people who are calling each other emos and goths or whatever. Uh, I prefer to not call us anything and just call <laughs> people by their names uh, because I think we're all unique and special in our own ways, and we don't fall into stereotypes. I don't we like to. I don't like stereotypes. To, I don't like to be or stereotype to label people. Myself. Because Ashley and I have been stereotyped our whole lives for being artists, and people think that we're a certain way, or we have certain interests. And or there's such a variety of opinions among artists. Right, it, it, all types of people um, can find a place in art. And it, it is frustrating when people assume that you're a stereotype when you're not. Um, so I'm very careful about that. Uh, let's see. Funky Groove says Ashley does the paper like screen protector for iPad just stay on the permanent pad feel okay I think he's talking to someone else about using your uh, iPad to draw oh, okay um, and Alice says what sketchbooks do you like to use also what pound for say mixed media do you like pound paper um, and that's a good question Alice if for sketchbooks my favorite sketchbooks are the ones with tone paper uh, so a gray paper or kind of an off-white paper I really prefer gray paper because you can add uh, you can add a variety of value really quickly by adding light media like a white medium and a dark medium to the surface at the same time you do have to if you're carrying your sketchbook around you do have to consider that but uh, I think that it makes the drawing or sketching process a lot quicker and it encourages a full range of value. So uh, I like the Strathmore uh, toned drawing paper. I think it might be 400 series. It, you can just do a search for that. Uh, I use that for a variety of different media. And as far as mixed media goes, it really depends on what media you're gonna be mixing as far as the thickness of the paper that you're gonna use. Um, it, if you're gonna be using heavy typed media like maybe uh heavy applications of acrylic paint for example with with other 
things, then you might want to consider if you're and if you're working on paper, you might want to consider something like 300 pound watercolor paper, or at the very minimum, 140 pound watercolor paper. Um, but if you're just lightly combining media, like maybe you're using watercolor and pen and ink, then maybe 140 pound watercolor paper, either hot press or cold press. It really depends on the media that you're combining. Um, and you need to think about the support and the rigidity of the support that you're going to need to have for what mediums you're mixing. Do you have anything to add to that? I know you're. I don't believe so. I don't, I, I've been pretty, I've been pretty engrossed in what's going on right here. <laughs> I'll be honest. This is uh, this is a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot happening in that area. It's a lot of fun too. All right, but I do need to need to consider my handle a little bit. It's feeling a little weak right now, so let's give it some dimension. Um, all right, we got a question here. What artist, dead or alive, would you like to paint slash draw slash learn with for the day? Diego Velasquez. Hmm. That was a quick response. Yeah, he's, he's my number one artist. I'm I'm thinking. I don't think he's one. the greatest artist, but he's my favorite. Yeah. I think probably, and this might sound a little bit cliche, but honestly, th this is my answer. I think the person I'd like to spend a day with mm -hmm. uh, would be Le Leonardo da Vinci, um, simply because I, it, I, I think he is, in what's left behind from him, is perhaps one of the most interesting, you know, artists to ever. Live. And you know, he he really fell out of popularity in the 1800s. People didn't talk about him. And then when the Industrial Revolution came around and people became interested in machines, yeah. he was rediscovered a yeah. little bit. I mean, yeah. his art was still in the Louvre in some back corner probably somewhere. Yeah. Then they, they freshened it up, dusted it off, and uh, brought it out for, for late you know, 19th and 20th century um, art fans to enjoy. So he is it's a great example of an artist that was crazy popular in life, fell out of popularity, and then kind of returned to uh to fame and glory so and what i would really like is to spend a day with leonardo da vinci in modern times oh yeah and show him stuff right show him stuff show him a um, helicopter which would be incredible he, he, he would just oh yeah i've uh, seen that i drew that i remember that or show him the the wacom tablet yeah oh I mean, he would go know. he would go wild <laughs> i know with a uh, digital art uh, we think he would we, we don't really yeah. know well we know that he was interested in cutting edge technology he might just try to cut me open and see what's happening. <laughs> um <laughs> could you take me to the morgue <laughs> yeah where's the graveyard um brent does art says oh, ashley do, do you prefer the layout to the ebony pencil i i, I think so I mean, i've i've got i I consider them about the same. If you're talking about like the Prismacolor ebony pencil, definitely. I prefer the General's layout to the Prismacolor ebony pencil. I actually had some Prismacolor ebony pencils that I consider um, inferior. The lead actually pulled completely out. Yeah. You know, the, the, the lead lost its, or, you know, the graphite lost its grip on the wood. And when I would push down with it, the lead would pop out from the top. It was crazy. Just had to throw them away. So I'm not, uh, you know, I love Prismacolor. I think it's a good company, especially for colored pencils. But I prefer this General's layout. Um, and maybe you didn't ask me because you already know my answer. <laughs> I, I definitely prefer the layout pencil over the ebony pencil. And for me, it's because the ebony pencil is very, very shiny. And also, probably the core is too soft because uh, it breaks really easily. The layout pencil stay sharper for a longer period of time and i also feel like the lead is blacker and less shiny uh, so anyway uh, well nobody asked you matt so. nobody asked me but i answered anyway because i got control over this this stuff over that's here. right um all right melody asked matt how are you feeling i'm feeling great if you can't tell through my voice i am um really able to move my leg like I haven't been able to move my leg in a long time. Um, let's see. Thanks for asking, Melody. Nicole says, Matt, that toned gray, gray is series 480 pounds. Thanks for that, Nicole. Um, Glitch Intended Gaming. I like that name there. It says, what would you recommend for a brush to use after erasing? Can you use a makeup brush? Um, do you have, do you have, can you see my, is my drafting brush over there? Yeah. That's what I use. 
Just, you just wipe it away. It's a drafting brush. I've actually used makeup brushes to take the brush strokes out of oil paintings before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I um, see that. my wife didn't appreciate it, but uh, I, w I didn't have a goat hair. I didn't have a goat hair brush at the time, and the makeup brush did a wonderful job. So. Did Did she put on oil paint afterwards? Oh no, I kept it. I kept the brush after that. <laughs> I wouldn't have returned it. Um. Okay. Let's see. Some folks are answering the question of which artist they would like to uh, to, to to spend the day with. Yeah, or, well, that's or, a, that was a good question. And it's interesting to see those come in. Um, Melody asked, "What about the layout pencil versus the black wing pencil?" Um, and I'll go ahead and answer that one first. Okay. Um, first of all, I think the layout pencil is really suited for sketching. While you can do finished work with it. Um, I like its versatility and only really needing to have one pencil. You can put mm, light yeah, pressure on it. It's versatile. And um, it, you know, makes a lighter mark. You can put heavier pressure on it, it makes a darker mark. Uh, it's probably equivalent to about a 4B pencil somewhere in there. Uh, but I like the layout pencil for its versatility. The Blackwing pencil has a different feel to it when you're making marks. I kind of think of the Blackwing pencil as being a more finished pencil one that you would use for you know more in-depth drawings and you probably need to have a, a variety of of the different pencils to work with the three have to. The three black wings don't aren't there three i think i think there are uh, but you don't have to you, you know the black wing is kind of similar to the layout pencil in the in the fact that you can get a broad variety of value from that one pencil but I do kind of feel like the black wing has a different feel. It feels very smooth going over the surface yeah, of the paper. Yeah, it does. Paper. It's buttery. Um, and it's, I haven't, you know, compared its shininess to the layout pencil. So I can't really say if the layout pencil is less shiny or more shiny than the black wing pencil. But uh, to be honest with you, I have, I used to use layout pencil all the time, but more so than, uh, more so than, so than I used to, I really kind of stick with using, um, you know, four different grades of pencil, and I typically use Derwent when I do a pencil That's right. drawing. Great company there. Now, when I shade, I always like to find some of the darkest things first. You know, it, it establishes the full range of value already. There's a little white in the wrench, and then the cast shadow is pretty dark, so that's why I went after the cast shadow first. It'll help me figure out how 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 gray the rest of the wrench ought to be. So, um, full range of value from the start, even if it's not. Uh, very even if there's not a lot of variety in that full range yeah you can already get a little bit of information about the form yeah and the light uh with just two different values Rennie says matt do you need a lot of painkillers uh no but i have a lot of painkillers <laughs> i i have uh, had uh five surgeries in the last 11 months um and that is i didn't crazy. realize that until this surgery i was like holy cow i've had <laughs> five surgeries in the last lab so i have a lot of painkillers but for this surgery they gave me more painkillers of course but i didn't take them because i didn't need to um I, really all i'm taking is aspirin so i don't have a blood clot um, oh, but I, I wonderful have, to hear i have a ton of medication <laughs> <laughs> not just i'm just not taking it all um melody reminds everyone please remember to give this lesson a thumbs up yeah please do that if you enjoy this video give it a thumbs up and uh Leave a comment below after this video is uh, no longer live. If you're watching the recorded version, that would be great. Um, Julie asked, would you ever use a ruler for drawing the wrench? No, probably not. I, I do use rulers. I'm not against rulers, but, uh, um, you know, there's so much curviness down here. And I think perfectly straight lines might, there might be a dis, kind of a disconnected feel. If the tool was entirely made of straight edges, I would be more like, more inclined to say yes. But since I wouldn't be able to use an edge to work up against for the head of the wrench, I think I would avoid using an edge to create the handle. That's, that's what, that's my thinking there. Yeah. And I think, you know, I've used rulers before for doing house portraits and things like that, where you need something that's a little bit more exact, mm -hmm. but for most drawings, you're going to lose some of that character. There's, it's actually a little bit good to have a little bit of wobble in your line. 
It, it's um, yours. It's just like your signature. Exactly. You know, when you when you type your signature and I type your signature, they look the same. And if you draw a line with a ruler and I draw a line with a ruler, they look the same. So our mark making the the I get irregularities. I'll go ahead and say irregularities in uh, in our mark making is part of uh, it. It contributes to style. Yes, I, I like that uh, analogy used there. It's very good. Um, Let's see. Anne says, is there a technique to make black mark slash shadow without polishing the graphite shiny? Yes, to a certain degree. Um, what, what happens is when graphite is applied to a surface like this, if it's applied with a heavy hand, um, what will happen is you'll flatten the tooth or texture of the paper. And graphite in itself is already pretty shiny. So when you apply a shiny medium to a surface that you've made smooth, then it's just going to enhance the shine. Um, you know, matte surfaces aren't shiny because their texture is a little bit coarser. But when you flatten a surface and make it smooth, like you're polishing a car or something, it's going to be shinier because this, the surface is smoother. So the way to, to kind of prevent that is to start with uh, lighter applications with, let's say, a 3B pencil or something like that. And then if it's not dark enough, move on to like a 4B or a 5B, again, putting the light pressure when mm. you apply the pencil. If you put heavy pressure, even with a darker pencil, you're going to flatten the tooth and it's going to make it more shiny than it needs to be. That sounds good advice. I'm going to remember that myself. Yeah, you just want to work up and just go slowly um, and not put a lot of pressure on the paper. What is your preferred, let's see, whoa, let's see. The, tried to slide down and the, the comments went crazy here. Okay, Colleen whoa. says, what is your preferred paper for gouache? Um, What's I yours? think I probably use, it's kind of a hot press watercolor paper, but it's not as smooth as it could be, but it's definitely not cold press. Uh, I can't remember the brand name right now, but... And I actually like using cold press, 140 pound just regular paper cold for press. Yeah. This, mm -hmm. this, there's this watercolor paper I ordered for my students that is almost between cold press and hot press. It's uh, it may be because it's uh, I don't know if it's lower quality, but it is 140 pound paper and it holds up really well. So, and my favorite brand. I've gotten used to using it. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll check out the. You know when I did the gouache painting on the live lessons about three lessons ago yeah i think that was hot i think that was cold press paper that's cold press okay paper. i was yeah. using cold press paper so yeah. cold press or hot press i think is suitable for gouache with, with hot press paper your brush strokes are going to be more visible with cold press paper you're going to be able to hide the brush strokes a little bit easier um and um that my favorite brand for watercolor painting of any sort whether it's gouache or traditional watercolor is uh arches cold press mm -hmm. watercolor paper uh, let's see here. Keith says that Derwent has a pencil museum in uh, Cumbria. That's interesting. Mm, it is. Let's see here. Um, Mark asks, what are your thoughts on tracing outlines for pieces? I think what he means is maybe transferring photos or using a tracing mechanism uh i guess it depends on your sensibility like are you working as an artist or an illustrator maybe i don't know if that makes sense makes sense to me um i have used i've had students trace their their own faces contours on maps before you moving a map around to try to find lines that match up with parts of the contour so we had a different sort of a different um a, our goal for the artwork was to sort of uh infuse a map with our own face and so it wasn't really a drawing assignment you know the perp the learning goal wasn't um you know capturing proportions on, on our own and i was just doing that to speed up the process so we could we could focus on really the purpose of the drawing so um which was try to find contours that could would sort of repeat as both uh our faces and and still register as lines on a map so that's the only time that i can think of that i felt like it was appropriate to just sort of uh, trace the contours from a photograph into an artwork but other artists do it and they or they use you know they used to use opaque projectors a lot in the 60s and 70s 
course, we've got a lot of digital equipment to help us with that kind of thing now. And I'll answer that question, but I do want to point out that you are making strokes that flow over that plane, the top plane, right? That echoes that that diagonal, and that's going to help. Now, obviously, it's adding some tone, but it's also going to help create the illusion of form too, because of the directional strokes. Good point. So you need to think about your directional strokes when you're creating and, and drawing. And right now, I'm just trying to get some sort of a light midtone, light or medium tone on the entire wrench. Some of it I'll erase out. Some of it I'll, I'll darken. Um, as, as far as my opinion is, I'm, I'm trained as an illustrator. It's, that was my concentration. So, um, kind of the mantra for illustrators is, uh, whatever works whatever the works. quickest way where you get highest quality results. Right. So transferring images has never been that real controversial to me because it's all about, for an illustrator. They've been doing uh, that for years. It's all about the final product. Yeah. Um, and you know, ultimately process doesn't really that matter that much now my opinion if you're if you are learning to draw and you're you're drawing as a means to practice to improve your skill then you shouldn't be transferring images you should be practicing drawing but in some circumstances um, you're gonna you're just gonna have better luck and you're gonna um, be able to get into the the production part of the process quicker if you're doing something like a portrait and it's important that that portrait is an exact replica of the reference that you're looking at or at least the proportions are correct and everything's in the right place um, and if you're going to finish the drawing in a different medium for example if you're creating a colored pencil portrait of someone then i can see it to be actually smart to do a graphite transfer of the contour lines and then of course you're going to finish it with colored pencils you can't trace colored pencils you you have to know what you're doing in order to yeah create so it's just going to speed image. your process up yeah it's, it's not going to it's not going to mask a, a lack of skill right and if if you're doing a portrait anyway and you didn't want if you wanted to be pure and didn't want to transfer anything then you would probably likely use something like the grid technique to encourage you know um accuracy so why why not just tra transfer the image <laughs> um especially if you're going to finish it in a different medium um, in those circumstances i think it's perfectly acceptable uh, but again uh, you ask different artists they're going to have different opinions um some people would have me tarred and feathered for saying that um i don't really care it's 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 you know it's a technique done by illustrators throughout history and done today too so um in fact they were using the camera obscura and all kinds of things back centuries ago all the way back to vermeer right so we're talking um, 300 years ago there was some tracing going on tracing going on yeah so if 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 people try to be kind of uh you know kind of look down your nose at you for for doing that well you can just keep in mind that um artists have been doing that for for centuries or some yeah. form of it we're, we're picture builders is what we are there's a lot of ways to do that okay Edie, Edie gives us some scientific information here graphite molecules are plate shaped so when they get pressed flat they cause a shine okay so that would make sense i um, did not know that awesome now i had shaded over my <laughs> lines just to make sure i make it to my edges so just kind of cleaning up those edges now Melody says, ah, sneakers are to Matt is what tools are to Ashley. But I, in all <laughs> fairness, I will say, I think I've only drawn one pair of shoes. Well, I've drawn some boots. I'm trying That's to right. think. I've, you got I've your painted boots. on shoes before. Yes. And by the time you finished them, your son had outgrown the size <laughs> and never got to wear them. Uh, That's right. No. But it was a nice... Uh, that video didn't do too well on YouTube. Oh, I don't think I, I the audience is that. into painting on tennis shoes. Painting on shoes, yeah. Um, let's, let's see here. Matt says... Uh, oh, Nicole says, Matt, list some of your favorite illustrators past or present. Um Definitely, uh, that's a real tough. But I would say my my favorite uh, illustrator is uh, Norman Rockwell. I, I really like N.C. Wythe too. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many of them uh, that are really you, highly skilled. Uh, I like Jamie Jamie Wythe's artwork is really great. Also, yeah. more of an illustrator like his grandfather. Um, I I really like uh, illustrations that are more traditional and look like a piece of fine art more so than some of the more modern digital stuff. Uh, I mean, I, 
I appreciate it and I understand the amount of work that goes into it, but um, I kind of like more traditional looking illustration. I think my battery's going dead. I got another one of those in the drawer if you need it. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. Henry oh, that's K a whole says, different R RPM range right there. <laughs> my grandson is six years old and wants to learn drawing. How can I help him? Um, well, you could probably um, learn some aspects of drawing and um, teach do it them. Do together? But at six years old, what I would really do is just encourage creativity. I wouldn't really get too technical with things with a six-year-old. <laughs> I would at this stage I would maybe put a vase of flowers in front of him or her or it's him it's a grandson um, and say draw this vase of flowers and try to look at the flowers to draw it and then step back and let things happen you could e even you know come in every once in a while and say now you see that pedal how would you draw that one pedal and then you can kind of help them do that you really want them to get in the groove of observing but also allow for a lot of creativity and keep the criticism at a minimum you don't you want drawing and creating art to be a fun experience and you don't want to uh you know crush <laughs> a young soul uh by something that you inadvertently say that 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 is taken the wrong way. Matt, we do you remember a guy when we were growing up? His name was Mark, and he wore this red costume that held pencils all over it, and he would draw, like, spaceships and aliens and caves with uh, on other planets and craters with all these little creatures that were crawling out. And he had a whole wall in his studio. This was a program. Did he, he, live, did he live down? Did he live in an alley downtown? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I'm getting he was like Bob somebody. Ross for kids. <laughs> he was like Bob Ross for kids. And yeah, I would watch I him when yeah. I was probably six or seven. And that's how I started learning to draw oh, really? spheres and cubes <laughs> and things like that. And he made it fun. Yeah. And his video, I found his videos for my son yeah. on YouTube. Now, okay. these are from the mid 80s so if you his name was mark okay and mark he, the and, drawer right and if and if you could find his videos they're tailored um to teaching little kids how to draw oh interesting. and it was so much fun and you know uh he's probably the reason i started drawing in the first place and it was just really creative and zany it was like peewee's herman peewee herman's playhouse for uh you know for kids that like to draw <laughs> Yeah, um, like, it was like that. <laughs> okay, uh, Edie says, what do you guys think about spray can art of planets, et cetera, done by street artists? I think any type of creative endeavor has merit and uh, can be appreciated by anyone if they know, uh, if they just take a take a minute to, to find things to appreciate about the art. So um, I have no problem with people making art with whatever medium they want, whether it be a can of spray, uh, a spray can of paint or a banker's pencil <laughs> does it matter a banker's uh, bonded pencil i don't know if the bonded <laughs> it refers to a product there or uh and they're insured your money is safe i don't i don't know uh, i think some banks could use a uh, use some bonded pencils right now all over the world oh gosh uh, julie says will you be doing any watercolor pencils not tonight but uh, we do have lessons for watercolor pencils on youtube and on the website already and um, I think that might be what I'm doing for my next live lesson series after Ashley figures, uh, finishes up uh, with his series right now. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's what you were asking or not, but that was in all capital letters. So, so you read it. And right. And let's see. Moving on to the next one. Uh, let's see. Would you recommend the Loomis method for portrait drawing? I think it's. In, I think the Loomis method is a wonderful method for drawing people from your imagination, uh, people that you make up. Um, I, I think that having some knowledge of the Loomis method is good for understanding what you're seeing when you're drawing a portrait. But I think pure observation is better when it comes to portrait drawing, um, or if you're drawing from a photo. Uh, using you know the grid technique or something which we already talked about before uh, the Loomis method is a very structured approach to drawing people mm -hmm. and yes the people look like people when you draw them but the problem is a lot of times you can look at a Loomis head and compare it with another drawing uh, that used the Loomis method and you they they look similar it reminds me of the Raphaelesque head Right, just and basically an upside down egg. You can tell when Raphael was drawing a person by looking at him, and when he was making it up. You can you can really see it in his artwork. Nothing wrong with Raphael. Not talking any junk there. 
And I think the Loomis method is a very, like I said, it's a very structured, I use it. process oriented technique for for drawing portraiture or drawing portraits. But it it does Loomis heads kind of have a look about them that are, that are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, anything you can learn about art and creating art is beneficial. Let's see, Mark. Kissler is the name of the That's person it. you're that referring to. That is it. Oh, boy. He is uh, so entertaining. I loved watching his artwork growing up. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was even, when my son was just a few years younger is when we found those uh, those drawings. And I kind of like drawing along with him here, uh, what, 30, 36, 38 years later. Mark Kissler. So maybe introduce your grandson, if it was your grandson, um, to his to his videos. And uh, so they're a little dated. All right. So the time. I guess that's it. Is up. Yeah, I could definitely tell this isn't a forty-five minute drawing, but uh, I felt like I got pretty well into it in, well, in the thirty were, minutes. You were definitely more relaxed on yeah. this last one. You were you were stopping and talking, and you were like, "I've got all day." That's and and that is how it felt. <laughs> it was great. So I think it would. Be I think I'm going to start doing one minute drawings before we go live every 45 minute drawing. You know, before think, we even before we even you know uh, turn the cameras on. You know, maybe that's why they had us do that in art school. Maybe that's why maybe, they had us maybe, do that. You know how teachers <laughs> make you do stuff and don't tell you why. Yeah, which has always driven me crazy. It totally changed maybe my they mindset. Told us that they know? told told us why we were doing these right. one minute drawings instead of right. just torturing us with it. I thought they were just trying to fill up time. All right, Rennie says the tool looks pretty cool. Leon yeah. says looks, looks great, Ashley. Looks pretty cool. Now, I think it would be interesting to see the one minute drawing, the five minute drawing. And Me too. We're gonna flip. I'm gonna flip them all the way back so that we can lift them all up together. So let's see. All right, there are three wrenches here. Yeah, that's right. And the the, the that was the one minute. Oh, that no. was the five minute. Okay. okay, here's the one minute. Wow. One minute. I mean, this wow, is it's pretty abstract in there. It's like shark's teeth. Yeah, it's it is like kind of, a shark fins. It in is there. definitely abstract. Pretty well. I almost feel like it was a blind contour drawing, but I swear I was looking. Now, <laughs> I wonder if we would know that was a wrench without the reference. I don't know. That's a difficult one. All right, I will quiz somebody who did not watch the program. Right now, my daughter came home one day with a drawing of a pair of scissors, and we mm -hmm. have kept that image, and I'll have to show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can already imagine. Because it doesn't look like a pair of scissors. Yeah, that's great. Um, all, right, all right, so... In the five minutes? There we go. Big all difference right. there. Big that difference. was like 500% more time. And then the next drawing was about, what, 600% more time. So it's a similar gap, you know, uh, percentage-wise between each of the three drawings. So, All right, yeah. And the, then minute. the 30 minute one is... Fully Five rendered, yeah. full range of value. What a difference. I, I indicated that there's writing on there. I didn't write any letters, but it's there. You can tell that there's some, some business going on. I, I needed to get darker. And if, if we were working for 15 more minutes, I would have just kept pushing those values down um, until the highlights uh, were a little bit more apparent. So uh, that's where I would have liked to have gone with this. With this drawing, I feel like the value, the values are arranged in the correct order. Uh, they just need to be pushed farther down the value scale. Well, I think it looks great, and I think you did a wonderful job with all three yeah, of the. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed I it, doing that. Yeah, I think it was a great exercise. It felt like uh, going. Uh, felt like I was in school again. <laughs> um, real quick here, uh, Hamdi says. Any books you can recommend that help can help with technical drawing. Um, I, you know, there are tons of great books out there for for just drawing in general. Many of you know I'll, I'm I'm, I'm a, um, a big advocate of the book Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. That's a fantastic one. But as far as technical drawing goes, and this book does have information about technical drawing, but it's really about drawing faster. Um, and it's uh, called Rapid Viz. I think it's what it's called, Rapid Viz. It's an old book, um, and, and so it's been around for a while, but uh, I would definitely recommend checking out Rapid Viz, I think, and, um, of course, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. All right. Well, I All have, right. I have and squeezed. Henrique has have given squeezed. us a super hey. chat. So thank you for that. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you. I got to find... 
Lovely. I gotta find the uh, the thing here. Yeah, our, our super chat animation. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Hey. It, it's been a while since we've got to use that. Come on, guys, with the super chat. I mean, my gosh, you'll get to hear us do that little silly thing here. <laughs> uh, but thanks for that. All right. Uh, there, Henrique. Um, all right, now I got to figure out how to get back here. All right, you got a lot of lot of uh, buttons to push tonight, don't you? Um, all right, real quick with the comments. Great job, mm -hmm. guys. Uh, what time are you starting the live lesson? The live lesson will start at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that's thirty minutes from now. Um, and uh, Ashley is working on a painting of a French bulldog. Right? That's right, a little brown uh, French bulldog. All right, but right now, as Ashley's putting the it's information time. there, it is time for us to play the game here. So we'll switch over here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Let's Get Creative with your contestants, Matt and Ashley. And now tonight's Let's Get Creative Challenge. All right, so as you know, each week, uh, for this season anyway, we have this lovely board here. Of possibilities. With, with possibilities. Of course, you guys have voted. And uh, let's see what the prompt for two weeks from tonight is going to be. Because remember, next week, we're going to not have the live session. Going to have a spring uh, break. We'll have a spring break. Um, and let's see what you guys voted on for me next week. Or the week after that. Oh, here we go. Here we go. That's future in the balance. Fruit Loop, it is. Fruit Loop, very appropriate yes. for Matt. Yes, absolutely. I am excited about <laughs> Fruit Loop. And the reason why I'm excited, uh, let's take a look at that prompt here. This the one's going to be is cool. Combine the visual and textural characteristics of two fruits and create mm. a drawing. Mm. So I'll read that again. Combine the visual and textural characteristics of two different fruits and create a drawing. So like if two fruit had a baby, that the, your drawing will be the result. You got it. I got you it. Got I understand. It. That's the concept. I understand. That's the concept. That's a good way to think yep. of it. If two fruits had a baby, two non-related fruits, <laughs> uh, what would their baby look like? So uh, that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure- now, Matt, you've been talking about this drawing for like six weeks. I can't wait I'll to do it. This is the one that Matt's been one. I'm beginning to think all the votes were his. He's been <laughs> going have, to all of his friends' houses, yeah, logging like, on to like their computers almost 900 votes. and I voting. I voted that many times. <laughs> um, uh, now, I, I do think, I, I have been wanting to do this one. I have a vision in my mind already. I hope it plays out the way that I want it to. Uh, but I feel pretty confident that I'm gonna be using a combination of markers and colored pencils, more than likely on marker paper for this drawing. Um, and again, that would be a week from next week. Um, so let's see. People are happy about that. that We're getting a lot of sure. suggestions. Uh, mm, somebody could Nana. guess it, but we won't tell oh, good, you. Good suggestion. Straw Fruit Loop cereal. No, this isn't Fruit Loop cereal. No, this is <laughs> a strawberry and a lime. That's interesting. A banana and an orange. That's interesting. I shouldn't say orange like I'm a pirate. Orange. 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 A banana and an orange. Uh, Pomegranate, banana, peach, watermelon, pineapple, pear, mm. watermelon. There's so many combinations. So I've many got a combination in my mind right now. Uh, I may do it. I may may take one of your suggestions, but uh, well, you've got some time to think about it. I got now. some time to think about it. Actually, yeah. a good amount of time. Um, so Ashley did a fantastic job tonight. Uh, remember, if you like this video, make sure you give it a like. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you doing? It's absolutely free to click on that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so you're notified when we go live here with Getting Sketchy and also when I post new videos here, uh, which I've known to do time to time. Um, Ashley, do you have anything else for the folks? Well, if you drew along with me, uh, thanks for turning wrenches with me tonight. And uh, we'll see you back here in two weeks. And uh, just keep uh, keep practicing, experimenting, and revising your work. Those are artistic uh, art types of artistic behavior. All right. Very good suggestions. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. If you're joining us for the live broadcast in the next hour, we'll see you in just a minute. Until then, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success. Good night, everybody. <laughs>